Hello, welcome to the Spark Lab. I am Rebecca and this is Book and Cook. Today we are going to be marinating some chicken breasts. Uh, we'll be using an Asian style marinade. Uh, this marinade is also good if you want to use it for tofu, it's good for pork. Uh, it probably would be okay for beef. Beef is a little bit of a stronger flavor itself, so you're probably going to want to do a milder meat, which is why you're going to do chicken or pork or tofu. Um, we're going to start with soy sauce. To this we are going to add a quarter cup of soy sauce. You can use regular soy sauce. There's also uh, dark soy sauce available. If you are looking to be gluten free, um, check out tamari soy sauce. Tamari soy sauce can be gluten free. You do have to read the label. Um, the reason, the difference between tamari soy sauce and regular soy sauce is that it's supposed to not have any wheat products in it. Sometimes they, sometimes they lie. So make sure you read the label. Um, I will say that Kiko Man's actually does label their tamari soy sauce gluten free, the stuff that is gluten free. So if you're looking for gluten free, there's really no gluten anywhere else in this. Um, and use your tamari soy sauce. Tamari soy sauce also has a slightly milder flavor than regular soy sauce. So if you find soy sauce a really strong flavor that you don't particularly like, try the tamari. Because it doesn't have the wheat in it, it does have a little bit of a lighter flavor. If you like, really like the taste of soy sauce, get the dark soy sauce. It has a, is fermented longer, has a much stronger flavor. But we're just using a quarter cup today. Then we are also adding a quarter cup of mirin. Mirin is a sweet cooking rice wine. So this is gonna be a sweeter marinade. It is a wine. So if you are, for whatever reason, you're eating halal, not halal, if you, for other reasons, do not use alcohol, don't use this. You can in its place to get that sweetness, uh, add a little sugar to vinegar, and it will give you a little bit sweeter, it'll give you a sweeter taste. Um, but that, like I said, if you're avoiding alcohol because it's against your dietary reasons, don't use mirin. Mirin is an alcohol. And we are using a quarter cup of mirin. We are using uh, ponzu sauce, a uh, quarter cup of ponzu sauce. Um, ponzu sauce is, this is one you will have, you will have to watch for and look for a gluten-free ponzu sauce if you're looking for ponzu because this is a soy sauce based product that does have wheat in it. So do, if you're gluten-free, avoid the ponzu. Uh, substitutions for ponzu, it's a citrus flavor. You can actually find ponzu at some Asian markets. Um, great one here. Nearby in Dearborn Heights is Perkta Shop over at uh, on Telegraph and Joy. Um, otherwise, if you're trying to avoid the wheat, find yourself, again, gluten-free soy sauce, a tamari sauce. Um, use a lemon and an orange to kind of get, because a ponzu is kind of a lemony, orangey flavor. So you can use the zest and juice from a lemon and an orange added to your tamari soy sauce in order to get that uh, that flavor that you're looking for. But we're gonna use a quarter cup of that. That's gonna take a while. Okay. Put that in your container. We are then going to add a quarter cup of rice vinegar. This is seasoned. Um, seasoned rice vinegar usually has a little sugar added uh, and a little bit of garlic quite often. You don't have to use seasoned, you can just use regular rice vinegar. You could, in a pinch, use um, white distilled vinegar. If you do, however, use less. Uh, rice vinegar has a milder flavor than your regular white distilled vinegar. A white distilled vinegar is very sharp. Um, a rice vinegar is more sweet. You're gonna to need to add a little sugar to your white vinegar in order to get the same type of flavor. So we're gonna do a quarter cup of that. Okay. 
And the reason why we add all these vinegars and things to a marinade is so that it tenderizes the meat. Um, especially if you're not, if you want to use a chicken thigh, um, which is a great substitute for a chicken breast. Uh, chicken thigh is going to be a dark meat. It's got a little more flavor, uh, less fat. Chicken breasts have a little more fat. Um, they don't end up as moist, but that's why you're going to want to put it in a marinade because you get a little more moisture in there. We are then going to add two tablespoons of sesame oil. Um, I am using a regular sesame oil. You can use a dark sesame oil for more flavor. Uh, dark sesame oil, the sesame seeds are roasted longer. I will say, oops, you do not want to try to substitute just plain canola oil or olive oil. Um, I mean, you can, but it will completely change the flavor's profile. You will not have the same flavor as you do when you're using the sesame oil. Um, you can get sesame oil at Kroger's, Myers, uh, or your favorite Asian grocer. Um, we're going to use two tablespoons of oyster sauce. This is different from fish sauce. Oyster sauce is cooked down oysters and it's very sweet actually and thick. Um, a fish sauce is boiled down fish and then it's fermented. And that it tastes fishy or not heavily fishy none of them do but it is not the same oyster sauce and fish sauce are not interchangeable um again pick it up in the asian section of kroger's or myers both carry them okay so two of that. then we are going to do two tablespoons of hot chili oil. This is actually a homemade preparation. Um, this is shredded chilies from the Asian market. You can just use red chili flakes. Put it in a jar. Heat up some olive oil, however much you need to fill your jar. When the olive oil gets hot, just add it to the jar, seal it and let it sit. You really want to let it sit at least for a couple days. Um, you can keep just adding oil to it until you've run out of seeds. It's not the seeds. Um, it's really easy. It's a great thing to have on hand, especially if you like a little bit of spice with your stuff. It's not as spicy as sriracha sauce or anything like that. It's just a little bit of heat, the very light heat. You cannot, if you get it at the store, make sure you get a chili oil, not chili sauce like you use on your meatballs it's got to be an oil you can get chili infused oils at the store um, they're going to run you a little bit extra don't worry if you end up with bits of chili in your that's all good or if you end up with extra oil because it's running down the side it's not a big deal in there stuff back up. Set it in the dish pan because it's dribbling. And forgot to bring fresh garlic to the pantry. No fresh garlic in the spark lab today. Oops. Not a big deal. The recipe calls for a tablespoon of minced garlic, which is about two cloves. Um, Sorry, my hands are a little oily after handling that container, so I would like to get them clean. Um, some people are going to tell you measure your your garlic. I like garlic. I am a garlic girl. I don't measure my garlic. Just garlic to taste. Then take all your stuff. Give it a good stir. Especially if you're using powdered garlic, you got to get that mixed in a little bit, and you've got to get the oyster sauce mixed in. So there's everything all, all mixed up. Then just set it to the side for a little bit. Get your chicken out. Now, a nice thing to know, one thing you should note about uh, chicken or other meats, they actually cut easier if 
they're partially frozen. So this is still partially frozen using my big old chef knife. And you're just making really, you wanna to try to keep it fairly thin. Um, you can either do it in slices or I'm gonna slice it down a little bit more. The important thing is that you make all your pieces fairly uniform. Um, if you don't make your pieces uniform and just drop them right in the marinade, they don't cook right, they'll cook at different rates and you'll get chicken pieces that are overdone and chicken pieces that are underdone. Um, when you're done with this marinade, it can always, you can always do this fresh with your chicken unfrozen first and chop it all up, put in the marinade and pop the whole thing in the freezer for another day. So you can make it ahead of time. It will freeze, all of it will freeze without a problem. So you don't have to do this, you know, if you'd like to prep ahead because it's busy during the week. So you get everything all set up on a weekend. This is a recipe that you can prep ahead. Um, this is great for Asian dishes, obviously, but it doesn't have to be an Asian dish. If you wanna toss it with something else, if you just want whatever vegetables you have handy, you can toss it in a, uh, a skillet with any kind of vegetables you can Use this to marinate the chicken breast whole, if you prefer to do that. If you just like to take your chicken breasts because you want to bake them or grill them, you can use this marinade just on a whole breast. But I'm kind of making this for a skillet dinner at some point in time, or a stir fry, if you haven't decided yet. So I'm gonna cut it down into smaller pieces so that when I, it comes time to cook it, it cooks pretty quick. As you can see, it's still pretty frozen. your fingers out of the way of the giant knife blade. Oops. I'm going to have to disinfect the whole cart now. Important thing to note, wherever you're cooking chicken or other meats, try to keep all the utensils that you're using with the raw meat separate. So if you're using a knife, don't take this knife now and go chop up all your vegetables before you wash it because you run the risk of contaminating your vegetables and we do not want anybody getting sick when they're cooking. So whatever you're using, use a separate cutting board. Um, with meats, it's really best if you can use a plastic cutting board um, rather than using wood, unless you really scrub your wooden cutting board well, because I know they say, oh, well, bamboo is antimicrobial. Oh, wood kind of sheds microbes. You don't want to get something gross stuck in a crack because you were cutting on your cutting board and there's a little cut and the next time you use it and you're chopping up for your salad and it turns out that something gross gets in there. Like I said, we don't want anybody sick when they're cooking. So use separate utensils when you're prepping. If you're prepping meat, really prep your vegetables first um, and put them either on an ice bath or in the fridge while you're prepping your meat, just to avoid that cross-contamination. The other thing will be is when you put your marinade in the fridge to marinade, keep it on the bottom shelf. Don't put it above everything else. Um, you don't wanna run the risk of something getting knocked over and spilling on all your stuff that you might wanna eat raw. Um, it's best to keep meat either in a separate drawer, but it's always best just to keep them towards the bottom of a fridge. If you're thawing something, make sure you put a pan under it so that if it starts whatever container, you know, bag, if you had it in a plastic Ziploc or whatever, or you had it in the container that it came from the grocery store in, that if it starts to dribble, it doesn't dribble all over everything in your fridge either. Um, Cross-contamination is a thing. And for the third time, don't want to get sick when you're cooking. So we'll get the last of our chicken cut up here. I'll throw that extra little fat. Like I said, it's uniform slices, not doesn't matter how big or small you make them, but once you commit to a size, 
you've committed to that size. You want everything to cook evenly. You don't want bits that are more cooked than others. And again, watch your fingers with the choppy knife. well take your bowl and you just make sure everything gets well coated this is about a pound of chicken this marinade is good for mm, I'd say a pound to two pounds of chicken um, or a 14 ounce package of tofu or again a pound to two pounds of pork if you like pork if you don't eat pork more power to you um, but like I said good for chicken Good for tofu, good for pork. Once you've got everything all mixed up, it's all nicely coated, everybody's happily soaking in the pool. You want to take plastic wrap, put the plastic wrap, put it in the fridge. You want to marinate your chicken pieces for at least 30 minutes. Um, that's the bare minimum. Really, it's best if you do it overnight. It'll really soak up the flavors. Those um, vinegar acids will break down the chicken so that it's nice and tender. Even once you cook it, it keeps it all and makes everything all nice and juicy and it makes your dish really good. Um, I'm gonna thank you all for coming. I hope you try this recipe out. Uh, remember to stop by and visit us at Book and Cook next time. Thanks, have a good day.